Should have seen that coming. <laughs> I really should have seen that coming. Our prototype failed at the very bottom corner where all of the rubber is pulling upwards. That is attached on two points on the top right here and down at that corner and that rubber is basically pulling it straight up and out. The prototype failed because we only screwed it in with two wood screws because I completely forgot to reinforce it. That won't be happening with this full scale version because we've got bolts freaking everywhere. There are a ton of stress points on a catapult, all of which are potential failures, which can cause varying levels of damage to the human projectile. This bar that's holding the rubber on could go flying out of the wood. This whole entire main swing arm is a huge failure point. What if we didn't build it strong enough? It could crack in the middle. It could split at the end. The mounting point for the winch could break. The pipe that is our pivot point could bend, could break. That could split the wood on the A-frame on either side. The pipe we loop our rubber around, that could break. Our stop bar right here, that point could break. These are all things that you might not think of when you just look at a catapult, but that's what we have to take into consideration trying to launch a human. So we're really being very careful to think through all of these possible failure points. Okay guys, so we have to make our own eye joist for these. This is what we used in the prototype. So we are using some 20 foot two by fours and we have to basically cut our own groove into them so that we can take a half inch piece of plywood, put it between them, use a hammer to hit it all together, glue it together, nail gun it together, and then we get our throwing arm and a glorious shake on top of it. Very glorious. So a dado blade is basically a stack of regular like 1 8 inch saw blades stacked together to create a larger groove in a piece of plywood or a piece of wood or whatever. There's not really another good tool to do that besides like a router, but this is so much easier for a really long length like we've got. Fortunately, we made it work with this tiny little table saw, <laughs> which we have ratchet. ratchet strapped to a plastic folding table. Not only is it ratchet, but it's ratchet at all. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no! So we're building two eye joists that are going next to each other on our catapult arm, and it's going to be wicked strong. So no flex, it's a good thing. Over this 20 foot span, look at how much flex this has if it's just solid wood. And then we'll compare it to an eye joist, which is incredibly stronger because of some really wacky physics. Been a couple days, so we got it completed. And if I lift it up and jump it around, you can see that this sucker does not flex at all. The <laughs> I awesome. joist for something else. Okay, so we've started on the big bad boy, but we've already run into some issues. We learned that these bolts are not going to be our friend because they take two wrenches, and carriage bolts are not going to work, so we need something with a hex end so that we can quickly zoom, zoom, zoom the guys together. <laughs> Basically, we're gonna construct the whole freaking monster here, but we can't fire it here, so we have to completely disassemble every single part, load it into that trailer, cart it off like an hour away where we have to take everything off, completely reassemble it before we can even fire it. So, these are six by sixes. Yes. They're extraordinarily heavy. Extraordinarily. <laughs> So we have to not only make this thing and make it work, but we have to make it super fast to disassemble. Ay, 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 ay. It's gonna happen, maybe. Forty-eight, okay. So an eight-footer weighs fifty pounds. And we had what, eight twenty foot lengths? So thousand pounds. Nice. Just the base weighs a thousand pounds. Just the base. Not Ooh. including the uh... Yeah, the arm the arm will weigh more. Extra. The arm probably doesn't weigh that much. The arm's probably like hundred pounds or under. Ooh, dang. The biggest trouble we've had with this whole entire thing is drilling straight holes. Because you gotta go through a whole freaking six by six. 
and the holes have to line up perfectly top and bottom with these metal brackets. To help with that, we bought a really, really cheap plastic guide. The problem is it's cheap and plastic, so it's got a fair amount of play in it, so Not it's still mention. a pain. Not to mention, it's like 100 degrees outside. Also that. Definitely that. We need more coffee power. Mm. We have finally wrapped up our first posts and our first side of things. Um, so this is only the one side. We're getting ready to start building the other side. And keep in mind that that 18 foot arm is going up there. So we'll be 28 feet off the ground at max height or match, max launch angle. Wild. 23? 23. Oh yeah, so you have to take five feet off. Yes. Womp, womp. How many how many days did that take to build? Three. It took three days to build one side. Listen, but we got ah. a system now. It's gonna be great. So basically, we're gonna have a hook that hooks in around this massive ring, which then bolts to the arm. It's on a pivot, and then uh, we'll be able to just pop it off with a very long lever, which is probably absurdly long. Probably have to cut that down. It'll be fine. We're about halfway done with the trigger. I've got it cut out, the big long thing. I don't actually know how strong 3 16th inch mild steel is. So to be extra safe, I'm doubling it up or tripling it. And we're gonna need to weld along the seam to permanently attach these two plates together. This is a wire feed welder, which means it has a handy dandy little trigger gun here with a roll of wire that feeds out from inside it surrounded by basically a pipe that pumps out an inert gas, right? Inert, non-flammable, anyway, the gas won't catch on fire. This is argon. If you use something like oxygen, boom. I think y'all did a video on that. <laughs> the reason you would pump an inert gas over this is because when you heat up steel, for whatever reason, I'm not a chemist, it starts oxidizing, AKA rusting really rapidly. And since we want nice, pretty clean welds, we wanna prevent that. So if you pump a gas over the weld as you're welding, you prevent oxygen from getting to it, preventing it from rusting. That would be why. And then of course, the trick with welding safely is you just make sure not to be touching both ends at the same time. Cause then you would connect the circuit and your heart would explode. We used the hole saw to drill the metal out because it had carbide teeth, which are now all breaking off. But the uh, hole saw can only drill about this deep into the wood and we need to drill farther. So we're switching to a paddle bit, I believe is what it's called, with an extender thingy so that we can drill all the way through. And hopefully we drill a straight hole. Please. That's definitely not straight. That's a hole. Factually accurate assessment. To further strengthen the throwing arm, I welded up these hefty steel brackets that are going to slide over the front. I need, I need a hammer it on, but they're gonna slide over the front and the back to really lock everything together. So there's no way they can just fly apart. On the top of this one, I have welded the hook. That is what the winch and the trigger mechanism is going to attach to. Speaking of trigger, that is completely finished. That is this giant steel monstrosity. So at, this is a very, very simple trigger. It just hooks over this loop. And then we have this super long lever arm, which means no matter how much weight is on it, it's really easy to release, to release. A little bit at a time, one side then the other. This won't even make it in the video. <laughs> so it always works. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have a butt ton of spear gun rubber. I don't even know how many feet, probably like a hundred at this point. And this is ridiculous stuff. It just 
has a life of its own. <laughs> what we need to do is make sure it's roughly straight or there's no like kinks in it. And then we're going to attach these two ends together with some paracord and we'll show you exactly how to do that. We got two knots. We're gonna stick it in the vise and we're going to make those knots as tight as humanly possible. Cause what we wanna do is we want those knots to be very small. Here's the trick I saw on ZNA Productions. You just take a little bit of soap and you cover the end of the knot because that is a tiny little hole in this. So just enough soap to get it to slide in with a pair of needle nose pliers. And then let's just try not to stab my fingers. And then you're able to very carefully and with much difficulty slide it in there. I'm not even gonna attempt to explain this knot. Basically it looks like this. And then if you just pull really, really tight and sort of rotate it down, it cinches down super, super tight. Snip the ends off. Then we will carefully burn the ends. Without burning the rubber. And then we'll just like smash really the end down to hopefully kind of seal it off where it can't come loose. Now we get to do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And again. And again. And again. Do we know exactly how many days this has taken? This ridiculous. project has taken over two weeks. We launch this thing tomorrow and it's Sunday night at 924. 924 p.m. We launch this thing at 8 a.m. tomorrow and we haven't even put the rubber on. <laughs> and then once you melt all the sides together, you get this wonderful creation where they both are in one uniform circle. All right, here goes nothing. Gonna winch it down slowly, bit by bit. Okay, and then let's just make sure everything is working. Okay. That's good. Oh, we wanted to check that the pivot's not bending. I kind of think the pivot will be fine. Okay, y'all ready? Yep. Here goes nothing. Three, two, one. Oh! Oh! You made it in the basketball hoop! That was so much shit! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That was, that was too perfect! So scary. Let's go! Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that marshmallow test went perfectly, so now we're gonna disassemble this thing, get it loaded in the trailer, and take it over to Seabase to try to launch a human. And if that doesn't work, at least we made the most expensive marshmallow launcher.